Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. This week, Rocket Cars is getting a new arena, and for once, it is something just a bit different. And Steam really, really, really doesn't want you to look at those sales figures. They've done some kind of sketchy stuff, man. Like, really, really. Zorios finds a way to look at the filling. What sort of creamy treasures lay within? And a shitty game gets even worse. <laughs> the new Vive has a price. It's enough to stop your pulse. And do you really want to play the worst version of Minecraft? Me neither, but someone did. I've been still here at LGC Actual. I was going to say swinging the bits, slinging the bits, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> Dry, see, see, swinging see, your bits around. <laughs> see, you, you, you pan the camera down and just full on meat spin. Piloting <laughs> the SS OMG. It's on fire here in Athens. Joined every week by our team Canadian podcaster. He's feeling a bit under the orange this week. You might know him. I'm, you might uh, love they him. Call me, they call me Agent Orange. Uh, ice, ice to meet you. He's, he's drinking ice. That That's most mostly what Canadians consist of. Uh, that, that's how they survive summers. They, they just eat ice. Mm -hmm. lest, lest I become water swung. But anyways. <laughs> I'll have to update your wiki. And from Britannia, that's one Pedro Mateus. Stay in a blade, as always. And joining us down there, that's Shot Realm Dynamic, keeping us um, honest-ish. Helping us form that last special little bit we all know and love. It's called Cocaine Voltron. Before we get started, we do like to see what's going on in each other's life organs. I think we might have made progress because my biggest issue was the video encoders. I've been playing around with UDEV rules and that, that shit's smarter than me. So my brain hurt. And Jordan Jordan's like, shut the fuck up, bitch. Type, 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 type. Here, try put that in. So I'm going to try to put that in. So my box is probably good giggity. Going to explode <laughs> tomorrow. After I get done with the show, what's new with you, Pete Baby? Well, over here, uh, I'm going to go uh, to downtown to London town next week. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's good to be interesting. Never been there. So it's, it's good to be a new experience for me. Work's paying for it. So that's good, too. Hmm? <laughs> Yeah, I, I I finally I finally caved and bought me an air conditioner. There's a Lowe's <laughs> that opened up nearby, so... It's nice. Oh, it's so nice. Did, did you put uh, it like, okay, so the one that you bought that wasn't a brick, where was that located? <laughs> was that like just in the... That, 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 well, that, that, that was that was the Lowe's. Like, uh, the Canadian... I'm, I'm not giving Canadian Tire any more money for bricks. <laughs> uh, th yeah, there's like, a, there's like a hardware store. So um, I, I fixed up the old busted air conditioner. Mm -hmm. I just needed a new hose. Um so I got that one going. I put another one in my room, and I have it wheeled out to the outside. So the ambient temperature of the entire apartment has gone down. And now I just have a fan pointed at my junk to keep that from uh, sticking to the ball. All right. Stick uh, into the balls. Hey, man, is, is, the, yeah. is that horse feeling a little out of focus, too? It, 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 might, it might be. It needs some Adderall. It's the Steam! Let's update of the, of the week. week. All right. Let's do it. Oh, yeah. So... Would you like to know how much the new HTC Vive Pro with the blue uh, paint costs? Yeah, uh, as the article title says, it's about three times as much as the original Vive. Uh, yeah, it's uh, $1,400. Uh, That's US a lot dollars. of money to get face fucked by a Smurf, baby. Oh, yeah. But you can I mean, get like I mean, the... I mean have, have, have you seen what Smurf hookers cost? Not that far off. <laughs> yeah but uh you could say they say that you can buy the bare minimum version for a 799 uh which is still prohibitively expensive for some people and myself well it's it's, uh, it's, it's 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 just the headset though right yeah um, it, it and, is literally and... just the headset <laughs> Now, now uh, the 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 other thing the other thing with this too is that you don't get any of the new fancy controllers like the article says you just get yes. like the you get some nice blue ones and. Uh, so there, there's there's the bare minimum package that comes with the the new headset and a bunch of the old hardware, uh, like the the Vive One base stations and the controllers. There's the deluxe, and that's that's fourteen hundred Canadian for mm -hmm. eighteen hundred Canadian. You get the kit and caboodle with the new uh, fancy base stations um, that can support up to like what uh, ten by ten or ten square meters, but you need to get two additional base stations that they don't currently sell so if you want to get like the holiday you want to get the hollow shed experience you're gonna to have to wait <laughs> yeah man uh 
That's the whole thing, man. I mean, something like this, they really have been throwing around heavy the, this is professional grade VR for professional people who do professional things. To me, that's code. It's like, we know these things are not going to sell in high numbers. Um, yeah. That's definitely the thing. 800 watt stinky cash is definitely, you can explain that away. Even, I was thinking about to myself, because I, maybe once a year, or once every other year, I'll buy myself like a thing. I'm still getting over four years ago buying a car, ladies and gentlemen. So, <laughs> um, but 800 bucks, that's like a big ass splurge. You're like, okay, I've been good, whatever. And I'm going to get $1,400, Pedro. That's like walking into like low end used car territory, man. Oh, yeah. No, you can buy a car for that much money that will last you longer than you will ever spend, than the time you will ever spend playing a VR experience. Because guess what? That's your, all you're going to get. There are no VR games. They're, they're all experiences. Here's something I'm worried about with this, because this is going to open up new options uh, for developers. They're going to be able to do more. But this, I, I got a nasty feeling this will be like that Game Boy portable version that had like the higher the, end the, model the, 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 oh, know, the, not uh, the virtual the, boy this the was DS. the handheld they made a handheld game boy then they made like a super deluxe version of that and like four games came out that took advantage of the additional features because yeah you know, they, they, they they did they did have that uh, i don't i don't know because like i've seen at least in toronto there are a lot of vr arcades opening up this so is I where see i see people buying it especially with yeah. that 10 by 10 meters and yeah it, when you get the wireless, I'm I'm not interested in the VR. I'm interested in the YouTube videos. I'm just not gonna be honest. Yeah. So yes. And you can build and, up and here, a lot and, of speed. And and here here's the thing too. Like you don't you don't. The, I I really feel like they sh really should have gotten like the knuckles controllers hammered out, hammered out because mm -hmm. that that that's I think where the interesting stuff is going to happen. Because if you want to actually target like professional VR for like modeling or like simulations for like training people then you want something more intuitive than holding on to the two ringy dildos and pretending to swing a lightsaber around right mm. yeah uh, uh, hey man sales over so what are the top selling steam games so far indeed pc gamer read a little bit of an article uh explaining well detailing uh the most uh well the top selling games on steam after the sale and the um well they're uh, they're not specifying because it's valve they're not making you know oh this was the best selling game because that would actually give some people some ammunition to maybe do some maths and calculate some things but uh, we'll get to that in a moment this is about the best selling games and in the platinum which is the highest selling <laughs> range you have PUBG. rocket cars dota 2 which is a free-to-play game now so i guess microtransactions uh, Far Cry 5, Kingdom Come Deliverance, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, Warframe, Civilization 6, Rainbow Six Siege, GTA 5, Vermintide 2, Jurassic World Don't Evolution. Have to read them all. <laughs> oh, They'll yeah. be in the show notes. Hey, man, that's the thing. But there's a lot of Linux love in that. I mean, say what you want. Yeah. But yeah, man, yeah, there's the, plenty of Linux the, on that list. The, the, there's usually about like three games per category mm -hmm. is what mm -hmm. I found. Um, and there's a bunch of games that I want to be on Linux. I'm looking at you, Vermintide. I, I want some oh, more yeah. Left for Dead. But and, you know, with Rat... With rat people. Speaking of games that aren't on Linux, this surprised me because uh, The Elder Scrolls Online is in the uh, gold tier and Fallout 4 is in the silver tier. How the hell did that happen? <laughs> I, I guess the people who wanted to play Fallout 4 already bought it. Or uh, console. Well, oh, yeah. That, that could be true. But then again, I mean, all these numbers could be made up in bullshit because it turns out Steam doesn't want you to know exactly what's going on. This is from Ars Technica. Valve leaked Steam game player counts. They actually got the numbers together. Um, mm -hmm. You remember Steam Spies? Like, we're going to come up with this new AI way because what probably could have been explained through GDPR was they set everyone's uh, profile by default. And that's how Steam Spy gathered the data. Once that mm -hmm. went away, Steam Spy was like, shit. All right, we're going to try this other method. But uh, between then and now, somebody found a way to do an API using Steam API that located your achievements down to like seven decimal places. More 16. 16. All right. More accurate than Steam Spy ever was. And this was awesome. Guy put it out there, started using it, and Steam's like, oh, no, mm -mm, you you can't do that. That That's useful. Quit. And uh, so they did put together a CVS file. I, I got to say this, man. I got to say this, because defaulting the user profiles to private, 
I think everyone would agree. It was like, okay, I understand. You just don't want to get that inside of that shit sandwich. But this, this Pedro is straight up steam saying you cannot has, we're making our own product. Fuck you. That's why. Oh yeah. No, it's uh, valve making it very clear. They don't want anyone else to know the numbers. It's, uh, you know, they are the biggest or one of the biggest at the very least, uh, when it comes to fully privately owned, Stupid fly, come here. come here. There, got it. Uh, welcome, and, welcome back to Breaking Bad. <laughs> like Breaking Bad cast. Uh, when it comes to um, like companies that are still fully private, Valve is, if not the topmost, it's very close. And not just in the gaming industry, but in general. So they have no reason to share those digits with public investors, with shareholders. They have no reason to share those numbers with anyone. So yeah, yeah, and, and I, I think I think there's a good deal of reputation management uh, going on as well. Just because th- th- it's been sort of a recurring theme, and we were talking we were talking a little bit about it uh, in, in the in the pre-show about uh, Team Cherry and like them getting to like a million copies on the Switch. Devs are not very satisfied with uh, with Steam these days, uh, especially because. Um, the it's it's harder to get your game exposed uh, in the hands yeah. of people who actually want to play it. So people being able to reliably pull numbers mm-hmm. means that someone might be able to piece together something and say, hey, you know what? Maybe you really shouldn't be distributing stuff on Steam. It's ultimately not worth it. I, I, guess, I guess that's like sort of a far-fetched, far Well, there was thing. also the take. I mean, but, reading from the article from ours, developers chimed in and was like, yes, this is very useful. We like this because this mm-hmm. is not... I mean, it's laser accurate compared to what was available. Um, yeah, which was, which was like some guesstimation from the Steam Spy guy. Right. So, yeah. Uh, kind of a dick move, Steam. Kind of a yeah. dick move. Uh, Rocket Cars. Hey, game updates. Let's get into them. Anniversary Arena. That's right. Balloons, hats, a new arena, and more. I don't give a fuck about everything else. Look at the arena on Brad. There's something a bit different in there, isn't yeah. there? Yeah. Detached just... goals. <laughs> Mm, the goals are detached from the edges of the map and birthday hats and I, on, I'm sorry man if that's your jam if that's what you live for more power too I'm just looking at this arena mainly because with this arena it's not like hey we released a beach arena it's like yeah whatever we've released a farm arena alright it, it's it, it, it's a circle some goals and shit you can drive through the goals in this and it's got ramps uh-huh. on the back this, this is added fuckery and I Holy endorse that fuckery. <laughs> yeah, th- this is this is all being inspired from like the the precursor, the supersonic acrobatic, idiotic, don't respect it, whatever battle cars. I I, can, mm-hmm. I may have mm-hmm. devolved into the rap from Hocus Pocus, but shut up. Um, the uh, the but yeah, no. Um, th- especially with like the boost placements and yeah, the the rap behind golds. I'm used to that though, just because that's like a thing in hockey. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you we get you know you you might be able to get a slightly more accurate hockey, but so what's the deal with the balloons? You can trade them for stuff, or man, I don't I don't even know what crates and keys really how that works. They're like there's, the like, there's like golden, they're golden eggs and some shit. Like suddenly, rocket cars turns into a Greek myth. I'm confused. It's a token thing. Uh, they had uh, they have different tokens for each, each different season. Uh, which uh, lets you, you can trade them for like hats or custom painted rims or yeah, then whatever. it's useless. I wondered where I could stick balloons on other cars and make them fly up to the ceiling. Or I, I, was, I was thinking something like that one mode from Mario Kart where if you ram into them, they lose a balloon. If they run out of balloons, they're just out of the match. Or, or, or glitter balloons. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> no, where it, it comes with like a USB attachment that just like straight up shoots glitter at your face every time. <laughs> it would be brilliant. Um, on levels of fuckery, level editor phase one is underway. Oh yeah. Ugh. See, there's 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 this game. I fucking hate it. Golf of friends. They have they have an update now. You can the the levels are already fairly poorly conceived, and now they're handing the reins over to the player base. To make even more ridiculous bullshit. Um, it's a little buggy. They haven't finished it just yet, but they want people to start playing around with it. Which which is, I think, uh, I mean, it, it, it's a good development methodology, right? Like, get it, get the tools in the hands of people who are going to be using mm-hmm. it. Get the feedback and then actually refine it from there. Uh, so now, now you'll... Oh, God. 
but <laughs> get, 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 watching watching gameplay of this makes me really just want to stab myself in the dick. Um, but the apparent apparently there's gonna you're gonna be able to uh, eventually add custom music, uh, some terrain manipulation, all the Yogg's Cast game special items. Um, yeah, you you need apparently a known issue is you need to save before you publish. I don't know why that's an issue. Normally, you have to save things before you do anything with this them. This is I don't true. Know. I was reading through this, and listen, man, this game's like five ninety nine, and definitely worth picking up. Massively multiplayer, fuck around party game. I don't mind it because I don't take shit like this seriously. I can flip that switch off from my brain mates. But you did bring up the thing. You know, they do warn that it is buggy. But if you've ever played this game, how the fuck could you tell if this was like introduced with your level or this is just the game physics? <laughs> I so think, what you're I saying think, is I think it's bug- par for the course. <laughs> you're fu- you're fired. Um, no, bu- bu- buggy, buggy is in like it's it's a little crashy. Some things don't. Uh, th- there's some clipping issues. So those will all be fixed. I, 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 I think Pedro deserves a golf club for that. <laughs> yeah. I guess it's someone yeah, casual yeah, with yeah. that pun. <laughs> jo- jo- join the club. <laughs> wah, wah. All right, speedrunners. Speedrunners, yes. they got an update. The team's update. Um, there, this, this is a change on the speed runners formula because now you can be as part of a team and you can have like teams versus single people. Uh, it's still, it's still four before you can do two on, you can do two versus one. Well, can you do teams uh, with two. open relationships? No, you can't. Boo. They're, 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 they're restricting you to a very heteronormative pairing. Oh, Nazis. And well, <laughs> Not necessarily heteronormative, but whatever. You you you, you can't have a three way team three three on one, um, but you you can't you can't have a two v one v one, and the whole the whole deal is uh, boost and items are shared between uh, the team members. Uh, you can you can swap them. So that that that's a, it's a very subtle uh, modification to the core gameplay, and I'm curious to see how that actually changes how people approach levels. Um, um, I think it's very interesting. I mean, this game is. Like criminally underrated, it is a fun oh. game. Yeah. Oh, it, it, it is. is a great game. But uh, team dynamics. Well, that's only you. You you're going to be able to swap weapons and stuff like that, which is interesting. Yeah, and you can share the boost bars. I, I think this is geared toward people who are far more competitive minded than we are of yeah. like not exploding while playing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh look, there's a demo, man. Shit. All right, all right. Yeah. yeah, no, I, I, I highly encourage that you go download the demo and play this, especially with some friends. Don't play it online because the people who play online are better than you. Oh man, I thought yeah. I, I, I was like, significantly yeah. better than I you. I mean, this, this is the type of game where yeah, if that person plays it, this is what they play. So yeah, play mm. with friends. Giggity. Uh, blast from the past with a little bit of WTF thrown in on the side. Yeah, um, and there's no there's no Antonio Banderas, and I'm very disappointed. Not even a life size Antonio Banderas <laughs> blow up doll. Uh, Desperados is available on Linux alongside with the Mac, Windows wait, 8, wait, Windows wait, 10 did support. You, did you just say a game from 2001 is it now available on Linux? I mean, we you what? could say that about 1997 and Vangers. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, so here, here here's the thing. It's five bucks. It, it's, it's it's a story strategy type game from 2001 about being in the wild west um and yeah i mean i i have no problem with this kind of stuff it's like with turok right it's nice to see that you can at least play these games on a modern operating system now yeah like it's it's not it's not relegated to like emulators or oh i need to like find some freaking hacked cracked version of this on some sketchy site uh, in order to even make it work with like newer versions of Windows, let alone being able to play this on Linux, you know that thing that we're using in the podcast. Unlike Turok, I would like to point out that this is priced sanely at four ninety nine. Yeah, this is this, this is has true. the retro price. Yeah, and this is uh, well, I look at it and I see, oh look, it's a dad game, mostly because my dad used to play a lot of this and Commandos, which uh, this game uses the exact same engine of. Bit so, of a hard mode. You have to install Ubuntu and Steam OS. <laughs> yes, I, I, <laughs> I, I mean to you dual boot them. <laughs> no, no. It's, I mean that's the whole point with Docker, right? Like with C groups, you can do that. You can totally run multiple operating systems off the same kernel. It's a thing. So all you need to do is learn how to Docker, and then you can play oh, Desperados man. and shoot people with a guitar case. So uh, we only have one new game announcement this week before we get out of here. 
Yes, there were more, but they were all shovelware. Mm-hmm. This one looks interesting. It's, uh, if you remember, Lovers in a Space-Time Continuum. This Dangerous seems space to borrow... time. Wow, Pe- wow, Pedro. That one. Just, whatever. Wow. Uh, can't even, can't even seems... plagiarize my notes properly. This one seems to borrow a lot of the uh, same... Um, eh, the same mechanics... And it's, uh, well, you climb into a human, as they describe it. And a regular human. Regular human basketball, yes. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, you climb into a human and you have to drive the thing around to try mean, and score. Wait, I thought the, looking at the video, it looks like the purpose is to mate. I mean, yes. you can do two things. <laughs> okay, all right, fine, <laughs> fair enough. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it, it certainly looks uh, like Quapit. Cars, almost. Yeah, the the first time I saw this was like, yeah, lovers in a dangerous space time, acts got like completely wasted and accidentally used the Snickers wrapper as a condom during a drunken twist with like Rocket League hoops. Have you watched us be- play hoops? That this is yeah. basically two D hoops yeah. for us. Uh- yeah. No, and what's what's the, what's even better is these developers are smart. Look at that online multiplayer. There you go, guys. This is yep. how you get people to actually play your fucking game. Oh man. Yeah. Uh, hey man, F and A. I'm guessing because it does require GLMC to be Yeah, just there's it. the GLMC requirement. So, all right, so there, there you go. It, it will work with your Nintendo Power Pad. You can, you can, you can use the DDR pad to play regular human basketball, and the game won't fight you on it because that's the magic of SDL. Um, all right, I think I think that does it for the Steam news. Coming up next, people, 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 stop giving Kickstarters money. If they don't have Linux demo that you can download and run, we'll tell you, we'll we'll remind you about that again in a couple minutes. And if you're not joining us live, you may be wondering what Strider is on about down there in Shet Realm about me being a freak on a leash. No, 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 no. No. Listen, no, no, I'm just saying, listen, anybody who's ever watched this horse shit, they know exactly what they're on about. <laughs> well, listen, okay, we're, here, we're, we're here to solve a mystery. And the mystery is why people keep giving us money. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good question, Jordan. Tell us about it. <laughs> I will. Uh, but not because you told me to. It's because it was the decision that I made. Oh, yeah. Uh, you can head on over to linuxgamecast.com. Click that support the show button. We got all sorts of crazy things that you can click on. Whiskey advertisements. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, you, you can buy us whiskey to make this even more of a train wreck. That's the uh, yeah, there's Amazon affiliate links, New Egg affiliate links, a humble partner link, LibrePay, PayPal, Bitcoin. We got all that shit. You can give us money that way, or you can be a cool bro or sis or whomever and go to linuxgamecast.com or uh, patreon.com slash linuxgamecast <laughs> linuxgamecast.com slash patreon.com all I know is I'm never taking directions from you man <laughs> slash gaming on linux.com hey yeah, man um, why would I go to this patreon thing do I get anything back do, I mean, you do out, you, outside you get, you get, outside of the like feeling good in my, in my heart organ uh that's not feeling good that's just like plaque buildup. but you, you, can, you can get a lot of cool stuff uh like access to our discord so you can fuck around with us uh get access to the show notes maybe even make some suggestions on the show notes just some stories it's good stuff and there's a whole mess of patreon exclusive content that you can get at like um pre pre super shows in mm-hmm. rss feed for that uh, audio only. We for should tell people what the uh, pre pre super shows is. It's the once a week that it's legitimate, even though we rarely get to actual topics. It is our production meeting, and that's where we talk about stuff we're yeah. planning on doing in the future. And there's a video component to it now. Yeah, and and, and there, there's even there's even talking you dev if you're interested in that. <laughs> um, you also get your name in the credits. It's some cool stuff. But you know, maybe you don't have some money. Maybe you have some uh, hardware lying around that you want to give us. We'll we'll take it too. Uh, we got to thank Mike G. Oh yeah, because uh, oh, dude, yeah. dude, he got us a Dell. Dude got us a Dell. Two Dells. <laughs> My, Mike's already hanging out on Frank's fine upstanding cannibal world. We got a little wish zone, which is a good place to go check out. Even if you, you're like, fuck you guys, I don't, I don't care about you guys. To see what we're doing in real time, with sticking this computer and studio and all this nonsense together. Mike's already up here. We love you, buddy. He's one of the first. Him and Maddie are having a definite like oh, yeah. nuclear <laughs> war with who's higher on uh, Frank's list. <laughs> at the end of the credits but uh by frost what are we working on we're working on this this piece of nightmare fuel to simplify things we've done the concept work uh proof of concept now we're working putting it into production 
Why are you doing all this? So it's going to make it wicked easy to get more people on the show, mainly developers and shit like that. So, uh, Mike G, dude, thank you. You got us Dells because I don't know, maybe Pedro was paying attention. After Wednesday, I was getting ready to hate purchase shit. I was like, you know what? Fuck this. Uh, we're we're going to spin things up. I'm going to spend my own money, but you can get up on the uh, Bifrost wall. Hopefully that's going to get stuck together probably by the end of July because uh, I want to pick up a little bit of extra contract work and see if I can accidentally uh, put that money in the wrong account. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> But thanks, everybody, making this possible. Uh, join us on Patreon if you're thinking about it, man. Buck a week. That's all we ask. And if you, and if, and if you can't, you know, spread the word. You know what? Tell your friends. If tell you your can't, dog. can't do one, like $10,000 a week. Because listen, ultimately, listen. ultimately, we want to buy that <laughs> missile silo, build a log cabin we, in it, and do like a month of the best shows you're ever going to fucking see. Then we're going to be dead. But Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's basically gonna, it's a race to see who dies of cancer first. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we we have crazy sure. goals, man. I mean, we, we're even looking to build an alpha site here in Athens for everyone who comes and wants. And uh, yeah. merch run, t-shirts, all that shit's in the works. So keep an eye out yeah. for that. Indeed. Uh, but guys, 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 they promised us Linux, so they're going to deliver, right? Right? Uh, yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, for Stone Hearth. Yeah, this mm-hmm. this game was supposed to have been delivered in 2013. I think maybe 2014. It's so old, I've forgotten about it. But they have the latest update on Kickstarter, which basically boils down to uh, Linux port. Oh, uh, LOL, hashtag joke. Um, no, man. <laughs> they're, they're just like, listen, you guys got to understand, you know, Linux was a $200,000 stretch goal. And our project only closed a little over seven hundred thousand dollars, so we 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 can't possibly finish that. I mean, you understand, right? Right. Mm-hmm. And and it has absolutely nothing to do with the fact that Riot bought them in twenty sixteen. Probably it doesn't, man, because this thing's been so heinously just like drug and mismanagement. It's like $700,000. It's not just the Linux board that is getting axed. All right, first off, dicks. Um, mm-hmm. There's a bunch of features and stuff that is never, they, they're effectively saying, well, here, we're going to put out what we got. It's missing a lot of features, but hey, it's 1.0. It's done. Bye. Peace out. Yeah, and it's... Uh... The best suggestion I have for everyone at home right now, do not give developers money for, you know, not developing games. If you want to see more games on Linux, buy the ones which have a shipped Linux version. Uh, If you buy into promises, chances are you're not going to get games. Case in fuck-mothering point. There's a couple of things we had to come up with, though. There is. I mean... This was back in like 2012 when this thing launched. Or? 2013. Yeah, the first wave of Kickstarter titles. And yeah. I mean, we, we we were still developing uh, the own the system that we have here. You know, back then it was like, oh look, Carmageddon Kickstarter goal. It was a stretch goal. First we did it, and that never happened. We learned from that lesson. We're like, okay, fuck that noise. Linux is a stretch goal. We're not even going to mention your project. Then it went on to basically what we have now is don't give anyone money unless they have a working. See, we're a working demo. This this is a working demo, ladies and gentlemen, proof of concept. But that's what they need. They need to have the Linux demo. But I'll I'll tell you that uh, like less than two years ago, when I just like laid that down and laid it into our contact page, we're getting five or six fucking emails like, hey, mm-hmm. we, it's a Linux. It's like, you got a demo? Poof. Gone. <laughs> well, see, what, what, if, you, if you scroll down on the FAQ, they're like, it's more work that our team can handle. We'll, we'll maybe look at doing a wine wrap in the future. It's, ugh. man. And, but, and, and here, here's the thing. People are going to get mad, and I understand. You gave these people money, and they say, get in contact with us. We'll see what we can do to make this right. They don't even say they'll it's, give you a refund. We'll see what we can yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, 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 that is the exact verbiage there. So let, let, let's introduce some people who may not be may not be familiar with the sunk cost policy. That money is gone. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, it's it's gone. Like 
I, 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 if if that was like your allowance for the week, I'm sorry that that that's that's all we can do. We can we can just yeah make, make you, you make again, you be at peace with the fact that that money is flushed down. The this floor. is definitely a club you, I would you, rather you not be in. I'm in this club too. I mean, I'm not saying ah, see now you've learned. I'm like, dude, this sucks. I hate for people to have to learn this lesson. Uh, it's an don't interest fry free into promises. You're not promises buying anything on kickstarter you're not buying a product you were giving an interest-free loan in hopes that you might get a product in return out of appreciation for it mm -hmm. no more no less i see a lot of people is like we need to contact the ftc i was like what well, do you want them to laugh at you look i'll laugh at you first <laughs> welcome to our club i know this sucks i feel bad for you i genuinely do because i'm there too but it's a learning experience i think we can take away from that B baby baby's got to touch hot stove to learn not to touch hot stove Correct, yeah. Mundo. How, how, how do I say this? Oom, um, one oom, um, loom. One, one oom, um, loom, ayoom. Or move is, one backwards. Mm, you, you can God go move, it, fuck Pedro. yourself. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, okay, this is an engine re-implementation, uh, LG, uh, GPLv2, of the original 1993 Master of Orion. You need the game files to play it uh it works with both sdl 1.2 and sdl 2 uh, you're also gonna need allegro to get this built and basically the whole deal here is if you if your platform supports sdl you can play this game on it they've apparently even tested it on haiku <laughs> it works so they're looking they're looking for bug reports uh they want they want people to test that that's really the main thing is if you're running like a non-standard unix then they want to they want to see how well it works um and yeah if i mean some people were super into the original master of orion game it was a fairly in-depth uh sort of grand strategy empire management game and a lot of I, a lot of people i know who played it were super into it free orion was kind of like it it kind of does what master of orion does but it's not the same this is the same so uh you can definitely check that out it builds i can tell you that i don't have the original game so i couldn't tell you if it actually works <laughs> I think it's neat when it comes down to game preservation projects like this, you know, it's, it's important, right? Yeah. I mean, but, yeah. it's hundred percent. It's going to be around and I'm digging that, uh, up next, uh, is, is that a Minecraft in your pocket? You know, I'm just no. really, really sad to see this come to pass. Well, it's, it's, it's a GitHub, uh, project from, um, MCM, our arm, uh, and he has created a uh, MCP launcher for Linux, which is the Minecraft Pocket Edition. And what it does, it's actually sort of clever. It's uh, It pulls the x86 version of uh, the x86 Android version of the Pocket Edition of Minecraft, and that's what it runs. Now, I approve of this unofficial porting trend. I think most companies won't approve of that, but... I do. I think it's really nice. And this is the really shit version of Minecraft. You know, the C sharp slash dot net version of it that Microsoft came up with for the Xbox and then eventually Android. Yeah, it's no. I don't know, man. You can't even mod it. <laughs> what I'm thinking about this, though, is you have a different opinion. I think maybe this might be good for people who want to run Minecraft like genuinely on computers that are slightly, slightly faster than your average calculator. Okay, sure. But then again, you know, .NET is not exactly res light on resources, much like Java. So... Now the 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 interesting thing here is apparently if you uh, if you download a couple additional libraries you can actually get uh, Xbox Live support which I'm not actually sure what that means if you're able to just connect to the Xbox Live ser uh, servers running the Xbox Live client or whatever so maybe maybe you have some friends who are like super into Xbox Minecraft and you're be being a Linux user you're like. I don't want to give Microsoft money, but I'll still still want to play some uh, Minecraft with some so of my friends. Pocketcraft yeah. is what the mobile version, or it's yeah, mobile, the... Xbox, and Windows Ten. Yeah, it's 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 the it's the dumbed down, stripped down version that I think is actually like multi threaded, which is kind of the important thing because OG <laughs> Minecraft is locked to that one core, and that's <laughs> one thread. <laughs> yeah, you. Uh, 
that and that, that's that's actually like why a lot of people wanted to move to mind test was because like C plus plus it's like it will use yeah. all your hardware and for like some of the crazier Minecraft mods like for like the lighting stuff if you go into like heavily forested areas the ray tracing will just kill your GPU otherwise hmm. or kill it kill your CPU anyways um, so I mean it's it's a thing it's available on GitHub it's open source so we got to give it props for that speaking of open source Pedro. Oh, yes. Someone decided to just open source their entire game. And uh, that game happens to be built in Godot. Yes. So uh, from, let's see, Guinea Piet, uh, they Guinea posted Pete. on Guinea Piet, whatever. Uh, they posted on uh, on Reddit that they are making a game with using Godot 3. And they decided, you know what? I'm just going to open the source for this game. And they did. And what when, when I tried to Google for uh, Paper Trail, it's like, okay, Paper Trail. Oh, it's an infamous Second Sun quest thing area. Okay. All right. So, uh, yeah, I basically ended up with that video that Ven just showed Paper you. Paper Trails is a 2D pixel art platformer. Um, yes. Yeah, uh, that's it. But I think this is a helpful example. I mean, maybe you're like, hey, I wonder what I can do with Kiddo. This is one of the neat things that you can't actually pull off and hey, man, learning. And I think that was very good of the authors. Like, all right, fuck this. I'm out. But as a parting gift, here's the work. And it's done with Godot 3. So, yeah. Um, and he, he, he uses, he, uh, there's a GitLab page. He uses a lot of open source tools. Like he uses Krita and whatnot to uh, do a lot of the art and whatnot. So that's, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. yeah. And Ben, a hundred percent, I agree with you. Um, this is like really useful for people who just want to get into game design period, mm -hmm. because now you have a functional example that you can inspect. You can fuck around with, you can take pieces out, you can strider them to make them <laughs> do what you want in your game. And I think that's, um, that's, that's important to actually increase the code quality of, um, new game devs just because yeah they they, they it, it's it's no longer this random black box oh maybe if i put these things together maybe maybe i'll get something resembling the game here's something that actually works that you that can is start yeah. messing around genuinely with. like the most helpful thing in all game development or anything else if you have a working example to dissect mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. i was like let me change stuff and even if that's that's your learning process let's fuck around with this part and see what happens and yep. exactly it can lead to that okay Easy UT Unreal Tournament. It's a thing Epic released uh, with Unreal Engine 4, and it's made quite a bit of progress, but it is still a genuine pain in the ass to get up and running on Linux, mainly because you have to download Unreal and do all that and some other stuff. So, uh, Champagne Soft he says, Hi, I put the script together to help people get it up and running. Feel free to provide suggestions. I'd say internet, kiddo. You're going to get them. Uh, single command. You download it. Boom. CH mod it. UT4 install. It's going to download a gang of stuff. You're going to look like 12 to 14 gigajoules. You're going to be downloading. And it'll set up a launcher on your desktop. I tried it. It works. It's a thing. I didn't mind it. Uh, my only issue is... This worked a lot better than... I was just met with a white screen, man. <laughs> Okay, to be menu, fair, menus worked, got in game, white screen. Yeah, to be fair, that's been the case for a couple of weeks now. There's been a lot of reports of people getting running into that exact same white screen mm -hmm. when it comes to the Unreal Engine 4 version of Unreal Tournament. And I looked at the script, and down at the bottom, instead of um, you know creating an sh command that does the uninstall and maybe creating a shortcut for it. It actually sets up an alias for all the RMs, RM command that it runs. And I'm not entirely comfortable with that. Hmm. Just, Why? It's probably fine, but it's, I'm, I, uh, no. my 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 issue my my only issue with this thing because it's 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 um os neutral it uses lots of curl it uses, doesn't use any mm -hmm. app or anything like that uh is that he's basically saying yeah run the script to, just download the script off the internet and run it you should be fine mm -hmm. don't ever do that people actually read what it does yeah, so this one accidentally I, rm dash rf. It. There's nothing you're, in it uh, malicious. Root. I mean, you can nitpick the script. Show enough. You could be like, well, I would mm -hmm. do it actually differently. In yeah. my, there's nothing malicious in it. I mean, you can. Right, it, right. It's human readable don't, too. Don't, so. don't, believe, don't believe us. Don't believe us. Read the script. Right. Yeah. Go read the script. 
it's it's open source, so just go read it. Starts out yeah. Bellum at Edward. I don't know. Maybe that's a different script. Um, <laughs> Oreos. Let's talk about Oreos. Those Oreos. Uh, not zero zero or not not five. Dawn Star is released. Yeah. Um, so. Zorios is the open source uh, implementation of the Aurora engine. They're trying to get stuff like Jade Empire and KOTOR and the OG Witcher to uh, run natively using Hey, Pedro, this. Do, you, do you see this YouTube video that I'm not fucking clicking on because of Wednesday? Yes. Booty, booty. <laughs> I, 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 just, I just see booty, man. Right. Any, any, anyways, um, the guy was kind of radio silent. We, we haven't heard from him for a good long while, but he hasn't been doing nothing. Um, he's... Uh, they released the latest version. Um, they figured out some light map issues. Um, apparently, there's um, several textures that are um, swizzled and need to be de-swizzled in order for um, lighting to work. Um, they're, you're able to... Uh, they've also made some progress with getting stuff in-game. You can get through character creation in KOTOR, or rather, you can get to the menu in um, KOTOR and KOTOR 2, and you can even get through the character creation in part way through the tutorial of the first... Um, the other the other neat things that come with this release are a number of tools meant for like making things a little easier. They have a asset pack explorer, um, and they also have um, and and some some mapping functionality. Uh, where 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 are my show notes? I should read those instead of actually trying to piece it together from the page. So one thing I, I noticed, do this every week. One thing I noticed is gentlemen. that this thing plays Neverwinter Nights, isn't? Yep. Or Morrowind yep. or what? What's going uh, no, on? No, never Winter Nights. Not, ah. it's, yeah, the engine, yeah, the, uh, the OG Never Winter Nights. Not not two though, because that that is a different engine. Yeah. Um, they, uh, one one th- one thing to note though, um, they are um, looking for volunteers. They are they uh, the guy stopped using the OBS build system, not OBS Studio, uh, <laughs> OpenSUSE build service, um, that will produce packages for Debian and SUSE whatever. Um, yeah, they uh. It, it, it seems like it's a little too much effort to maintain. So if someone wants to take that on, other uh, they're more than welcome to. Otherwise, uh, he's just going to stop doing that and maybe just distribute it as source code. So yeah. that, that that's that's a good thing. I I'm just looking forward to being able to natively play a Witcher game on <laughs> yeah, Linux. And and not just that, but one thing that made me really happy about this one was that titty tiny screenshot of the um, launcher for Dragon Age Origins. It doesn't show a whole lot. It doesn't even render properly, even if it's just the launcher. But that that's a very good sign. That's a very good start. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's progress. I, I too, am yeah. looking forward to... I, I, I bought Dragon Age uh, before I made the full time switch to Linux, so I don't know if that's, that is a heretic purchase for me. Ha-ha. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyways, up next, and I think it's the final story on the new segment, is Station Architect. Oh, yes. They speaking of Kickstarter games, these guys actually have a demo though, so you can you can actually play it. It's hosted on itch. Um, it is as, as they describe it in both the their website and the trailer, prison architect in space. I actually thought based on like these screenshots that it was used a bit of an FTL style, which kind of intrigued me. But if you actually zoom in, there's some actual graphics in there. So that that, that was a little disappointing. I don't know. You, you you build the space station, and it's all based on like modern science. And he, then eventually, he looks you, like you, he's you, taking a poop. <laughs> I I mean, every, everybody poops in space, right? Can it? Can, I can, mean, can people hear you? No, wait. In space, no one can hear you poop. <laughs> in space, no one can hear you fart. Yeah. See, this but is why the, I don't poop in space because this happens. <laughs> yeah, you get like zero G floating turds that slap people in the face. <laughs> Oh man, that that's what we need. We need Mr. Hanky in space featuring Starvin Marvin. Anyways. Howdy ho. <laughs> hey man, what are they looking for? Very reasonable fourteen thousand what's the it's eleven thousand pounds. And uh twenty four days to go. They currently have thirty two sixty one. So I guess if this is your jam, uh they are fellow Londidians, so it's cool. Um and they got a demo. That's what they get a mention. It's a demo, mm-hmm. Kickstarter demo. Did I say demo again? Damn it, I did. Um, demo, 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 demo. It's a demo it. FTL in space. If that's your jam, um, I I don't know, man. I, you, you might want to replace the uh, like shuttles that no longer exist in space. Uh, but <laughs> hey, man, whatever floats your boat. Or spaceship, whatever. Every everything floats in space. Yes, they yeah. all float in space. They all float up here. 
<laughs> all right that, that that'll do it coming up next cardiovascular or uh <laughs> everyone just hates cardio right i'm sure no 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 one likes running all right cardiovascular i'm curious as Card- <laughs> you... Car- 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 cardiovascular cardiovascular focused exercise running no cardio no. doing cardio okay whatever what, 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 whatever stay tuned Stay tuned for after this segment because we're just going to make Pedro run on a treadmill nonstop until he vomits, and that's just going to be hilarious because he's a smoker too. Uh, this is I hate running backwards. It's from Binks Interactive and the Crow Team Incubator. Um, so this was by some insane Croatians, uh, and yeah, um, it is done on the Unity engine. You can pick it up for about ten to fifteen bucks of your what particular currency. The devs did send us some keys for this. Uh, what is it? I hate running backwards is a never ending adrenaline packed shoot 'em down rogue light that puts the emphasis on destruction and fighting never ending waves of enemies while time traveling through procedurally generated worlds. Um, yeah, so this is the cheer QA edition. This is where we take a game. We, uh, we, then we talk about it a bunch. We break it down. So we got, we got, we got the facts section where we talk about if it launches the performance the controls and the graphics. We give it one. When we give it a score of one to four chairs based on those guys, and then we have the fun section where we give it a more lovely, dovey, feelsy score based on you know our personal opinions on what we thought of the game. So let's mm. kick this off. Then tell us about I hate running backwards in Ubuntu land. Let me tell you how Turok runs because my dumbass forgot to change the graphic. Um, something's going to get yes. sorted in post. Um, over here, what are we running on? 1804 LTS of the Kubuntu's flavors. Ryzen 1700, uh, 16 gigajoules of RAM with a 980, displayed at 1080p, uh, solid 60, no issues whatsoever, averaging about 30 at 2160, running it at UHD, no issues, uh, the voxels, it's a voxel game, the voxels vox, nothing to complain about. The latest update, or should I say the uh, avalanche of updates uh, that came out yesterday, one after the other, after the, they cocked up some things, and... To their credit, they were fixing it. I do still have this issue with the Steam controller. The Areola controller, Gaben's nipples themselves, is... If I start it with that, um, the game starts, everything registers, and you go into like the um, staging area where you can cut on Babby mode and all that fun stuff. But you can't make contact, or you cannot go through the Stargate. So, in order to get around that, maybe you're listening at home, you're like, shit, I have that problem. I thought like something was jacked up. Just launch the game with your keyboard, get to that, boop something, then pick up the controller, cut it on, then it works. So, can't ding it at you for that. That's probably going to get sorted an update, but I'll give it a clean bill of health at a solid four green Hornet E chairs. All right, uh, on Fedora 2864 bit with the i7-6700K and the GTX 1080 Ti. Yeah, um, there's a hang at the first launch because it's compiling shaders or some shit. And got me a little worried. Mm-hmm. But uh, after 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 Ooh, that, yeah, that's starts, legit. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, is is, is, is it busted? Am I am I gonna am I not gonna be able to play this? No, it, it, it works. You just gotta. It takes its sweet ass time to get started the first time, and then uh, it's all good from there on out. Um, graphics wise, uh, I was getting 60 at 1080 and on ultra, as well as 60 on UHD on ultra. So it is reasonably well done. But I mean, it's voxels, so it's not the most demanding thing. There's just a lot of little cubes that it's got to track. Uh, the graphics wise, yes, I can tell the enemies apart from the background, which is the important <laughs> thing in a shoot 'em up. So I can't fault it for that. And you know what? I got to give credit where credit is due. This is a game that has proper prompts for the DualShock controller. So I got to give it a big old green check mark for that. Uh, yeah, so four, four across the board for uh, Fedora. What about Solus? Yes, over here on Solus with the Ryzen 5 1600 and the GTX 1080. Uh, yeah, no, that first launch did take a while. 30 seconds in, I'm like, oh, God, is, is it not going to work? So I went a little bit more. I got up, made some tea, came back, it launched. Okay, right. Now, there is one thing uh, that it doesn't do, at least on my end, which is it doesn't remember the full screen setting. Hmm. It always starts in a window, regardless. Uh, but then again, it's a Unity game, so I'm not surprised in the least. Uh, the performance at 1080 was just 60 across the board. Even after you disable um, VSync, it still stays at 60. I did try to push the uh, graphics to Ultra, 
But on my end, with the lowly, lowly 1080, the best I could muster was 45 FERPs at that point. Uh, on high, though, it still held 60, so that was good. Uh, it's the graphics, yeah, it's just uh, infinite backpedaling Sam in Minecraft land. And the controls, mouse, keyboard, controller, everything works out of the box. And you get remappable controls across the board, which is something you don't see in a lot of games nowadays. So four chairs, as far as I'm concerned. Right. All right. Well, that's that's four across the board for the uh, technical section. How about the uh, the fun section? Ben, did you have fun running backwards? Did you do you hate it? Hey, man, running backwards is hard. Learning how to rollerblade backwards is awesome until you bust your ass. Um, here's the thing, man. Uh, I, I got to give this uh, game credit. It won. It was the game after eight months that caused my batteries. The battery organs, they went tits up in the steamy controller. Right at this point, right when I first engaged the Red Scorpion. Dwayne the Rock Johnson? (laughs) Uh, uh, Very tanned. Yes. Um, No, man, that that happened. And I I laughed because it was right when the boss loaded up. Controller's like, peace out. It's like, man, no, no, no. It's like, motherfucker. All right, well, I'm dead. That happened. 53 minutes of me trying to kill that motherfucker, by the way. <laughs> That's a true story. But I kept coming back because, you know, I, I love it when a game reminds me of an abusive relationship, you know. But there's no online multiplayer. And I know people are getting so tired of us bitching about that. But there's a reason. Because really, for this, the only thing this game has new going for it is just running backwards outside of that it's voxel gorilla war with the serious sam skin pack and maybe a sign of bullet hell you have plenty of weapons plenty of upgrades you get extra damage look at that bar up there by spinning right round baby into the level and you fill a meter and i guess you get more damage or some shit like that i did pay a lot of attention but uh what it does it does well i like it i mean the mechanics are sound it's bog standard but it gets the job done. But without online multiplayer, shit gets stale unless you've got, like, hey, come over, let's play a video game. What are we playing? We're running backwards and shooting shit. It's a hard sell. But online, it's something you can pick up, play, have some fun, put down, get pissed off, really put it down, walk around the house five minutes, be like, fuck it, I gotta get back in this. Because each level is only about four or five minutes. Then you get to a boss, then you get dead, then you figure out the pattern, then you get good. I'm not saying I hate running backwards. I'm just saying this is not necessarily my preferred uh, method of transportation. But I'll give it... mm, Acting like I'm I'm thinking about it, really just scrolling down to double check my notes. I'll give it a solid two. We call that a strider. We say, you know, it's not the best thing in the world, but hey man, this is priced reasonably at $14.99. I'll say pick it up. Mm-hmm. Uh yeah, it's it's reverse 1942, right? Like, you it's it, it's it's a it's a shoot 'em up. You you go to the left, you go to the right, you go up, down, try and not get murdered. That is the name of the game. Uh, and there there there's definitely there's definitely like a little bit of like the serious Sam stuff worked in there, and I think it works pretty well. Like the a wearables are a nice mechanic. <laughs> A little, a little this bit. Is, this uh, is like the it even starts okay, yeah, in the it, desert. Okay, no, it's it's all it's all serious. I'm talking about like the enemies and the, the weapons. It's all it's all nice and well done. Uh, the wearables are an interesting example of that, where like this is <laughs> so you translate a monster that doesn't really work well in a shoot 'em up context into a shoot 'em up context. I really thought that said Jack off the jungle. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, we, we listen. We can talk about that later. Then, you know, promises, promises. Um, yeah, like like then. My, my introduction to Scorpion was I, I cruise through the level and I'm like, oh, I Scorpion! Oh, it kicked my ass. And then you then you learn you do learn the levels. And I ended up perfecting it on the on my successful attempt. I got the I even got the achievement for doing it uh, before it even burrowed for the first time, and that was pretty neat because the the burrowed section is really annoying because you got to run, 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 and if it touches you, you just die. Um, is it just me or was the second boss way easier than the first? Oh, fuck yes. Uh, oh, yeah. okay. How about uh, beating the first boss? Did anyone else fall right into that hole thinking you could just go downstairs? No, I didn't. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I, I did. I, 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 now, fortunately, I, I, and, the game and, and gives and you an option to skip level, level back to where you were at. I was like, yes, if I got to yeah. go through that bullshit again, fuck this game. But no, it gave me an option. But yeah, I agree with uh, you, Jordan. 
yeah, yeah. The, the the second boss is way way easier than the first one. Um, yeah, it t- it turns out that if I if I sing a bunch of Donna Summer songs while playing shoot 'em ups, I can enter something resembling a flow state. So that was kind of interesting. Um, and here here's the thing: shmups don't really do it for me. This is an okay one. It has enough Sam stuff in there that I can be like, okay, it's fun. It's wearables. It's you no, know, it's clear. Got to murder them. Oh, I I hate them in this game too. Um. <laughs> And yeah, online multiplayer probably would have netted this another chair just because you can suffer you can suffer with your friends. But for now, it just gets dust. Yeah, online multiplayer and my biggest complaint is actually the fact that you can't aim. So you're giving me an option to have mouse controls, but I can't aim with it. Why are you, you playing this with a mouse again? I tried it. I had to try it. And it's like, oh, yeah, it works, but I can't aim. It just, uh, your character just shoots straight down and all you can do is move it around. Now, I have mentioned before how the simple inability to do something you expect to be able to do always feels extra limiting in a video game. And while I can concede that, yes, this was by design, I, I can't see in what way I can't see in what way not being able to aim uh, helps this game. It certainly didn't help me get past the general feeling of meh I got from the rest of it. Uh, Sure, it's an incubator game, and if uh, this is the center that we're looking at for Crow Team incubator games, by all means, bring them. I like them. They work very, very well. But as good as this game is, it's being sold for actual money now, so it doesn't get that pass. And I, while I can't find any other major flaws, I still don't feel particularly compelled to play this one. So two chairs. Yeah, mm-hmm. there, there's and there's a lot of stuff in this game too. You can unlock it. Killing all the bosses unlocks like hard mode. You can mm-hmm. get characters yeah. like Wang from Shadow Warriors in here. Uh, mm-hmm. There's just a bullet. Um, yeah, there, there, there's de- there's definitely good stuff. Effort was made, and it's it's very yeah. it's very polished. And we should point out very, that very there's polished. multiple players to suit your style, bit ranging from speed to power. I mean, it's your standard, you know, extra health or super wicked speed, and the more, balance more in between or that. something like right. that. Yeah. yeah, and you get your special weapons, your power up. You every character you have two options. You have your main, and then you have your special ish, whatever you want to call that. And there, there's a a lot of serious Sam. I mean, I feel like I'm playing serious voxels running backwards, which is not really what it says on the tin, but that's what it ended up being. Mm-hmm. I'm very so, much yeah. looking forward to seeing more incubator games. Now, if- I will say they threw out like a big, massive update for this. So I, I'm not going to say being a Unity title. I don't think multiplayer, online multiplayer can be completely out of the picture. No, and... And again, this is like super well performing for a Unity title, showing once again that yes, you can have good performance in Unity. You just got to know what you're doing. Hmm. Maybe 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 having access to a company that does a lot of OpenGL work would really yeah. really help. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think uh, I think that does. Um, I'd, I'd say I'd say give it a look for for uh, for five bucks or for ten or for ten fifteen bucks. Wait, maybe wait until it goes on sale. Um, but yeah, no, it's 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 fun enough. I mean. It's a it's a shmup that I don't hate, and I hate shmups, so Indeed. that's the thing. All right, coming up next, we got a tiny little anemic hate mail section. And then we're gonna play some Rocket League because that's what the show is actually about. <laughs> well, we're not uh, at this point as late as we were last week. You can see there's a bit less light coming in from my window, but hey. If you'd like to let me know exactly how many lumens are coming in through my window right now, you can do that by going over to linksgamecast.com, hitting the contact button, filling out the form. It's easy-ish. You just have to make sure you know, LGC At, at least the advertisements on our site are like related whiskey <laughs> and bed. Purple! Right. <laughs> I don't even, I don't even expect it. To just, whoa, whoa. Buy the color purple. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Prince sure. approves. The ghost Sleep of on approves. purple. Stretch on purple. I don't know whatever the hell that on the top right is, but hey, if you'd like to leave us a message, type down the things that uh, the forum so very accurately describes. Make sure to pick LGC Weekly for the hate mail. Some uh, games that you want to throw our way, you can do that. Make sure to send at least three copies or three keys or a build that we can share amongst the three of us, and we will be more than happy to feature your game. 
right here, right now. So this week, we just have the one bit of hate mail, which is sad. <laughs> yeah, it's from uh, Sven, and he's talking about... We were talking a bit about um, someone made a request to, like, Val, why don't you base Steam Chat on XMPP or some open protocol? Mm-hmm. And uh, Sven, uh, we, we were talking a little bit, but that Sven says, the Steam Chat is already accessible via the mobile API. Me? I'm using Biddleby Steam to pull it into Urk. I would prefer if it was XMPP, though. I hate nowadays we have a thousand non-interoperable islands. Islands. I mean, is lands. Mm-hmm. That is lands. Mm-hmm. And like I said, uh, even without knowing, it's it would be far more likely that Valve would just use an API to allow... Uh, for external communication rather than using an open one. I, I just and, want to well, think how fucking do. metal do you have to be to be like, oh man, XKCD comic, man. There's always that one IRC user. Right? <laughs> no, it, 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 I'm reminded of like the one change. Oh, my workflow. I defended on that one feature. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, yeah, to, to, to your point, it it is it is kind of shitty from like a development perspective that everyone is using their own API. Everyone has their own little silo of stuff nope. to interact with their chat app. But you know, here's the thing: there's no there's no real advantage from like a from a business perspective of making that open because you want to lock people into your platform so that they're stuck and you can go make changes like Skype and fuck everyone over like Skype. <laughs> I just like how the uh, latest commit on the readme.md was uh, added Debian crap. <laughs> what? It happens. <laughs> no, it was the git ignore, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Add Debian <yeah>. crap. <laughs> so, I mean, this is the thing. Apparently still works. Last updated... Do we got anything in the months? A year ago. All right. Well, that's... Yeah. Apparently. Well, I, I guess it's stable enough that they didn't have to fuck with it. It's Valve. They don't change anything unless someone kicks up a fuss about it. Of course, it works. Or, 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 or maybe there's another branch. But, you know, we're not, we're not here to talk about branching strategies. Hey, the we're one thing I did it. notice with Chad, we were talking about in the pre-pre, uh, of the Pew Pew Super Shows, and, um, was, uh, I would just give everybody a little pro tip. Uh, when you were playing Thursday, right? Mm-hmm. Playing the Serious Sam's, normally... Hey, if you, anybody wants to join in and we're playing Serious Sam, that's something you can always do is just right click us on Steam. It pops up and it says, hey, join game. Done. In the new beta, if you're using that, the fucked up one with group chats and mayonnaise. Uh, it, racist mayonnaise. Racist mayonnaise whistles, man. Uh, <laughs> listen, that shit don't work because I, I I had it loaded and I right clicked and I was like, huh. All right. Do, do I need to right click harder? Or... <laughs> Yeah, one thing I noticed is that uh, it does work in the main client. If you just right-click join from the friends uh, window there, it works. It just doesn't show up in the uh, in-game overlay. That was a, well, no, mine was, I in-game, didn't, I could not get it to work from the friends list. The yeah. option did not <laughs> present itself. Yeah, well, the beta has been a little janky as of late, so use it at your own peril. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I believe that's a proper bombshell to cue the music. You know it's fine. It's around 9.30 Eastern Standard Time. You know that's right. We're going to be here because we love you. We're like family, all dysfunctional and shit, and we scream at each other. But we secretly, secretly, genuinely hate one another. I'm Vin Stone, at Vin Stone on Twitter, Vin Stone on basically anything. Talk to me. Scream in my direction. I'll, I'll click on hearts and stuff, and sometimes I'll write back, but I'll at least read it. I'm Jordan Swung. I was going to make a drunken uncle, uncle reference, but I think that's a Shut your fucking face, uncle. Yeah. Listen, you're a boner biting bastard, uncle fucker, and you can find me at the Burning Fool on Twitter, plus Jordan Swung on Google. Plus. You're an uncle fucker. That, yes, it's true. Nobody fucks uncles quite like you. I am Pedro Mateos. You can find me at Unaccounted for on Twitter, or plus Pedro Mateos on Google. Plus. I had nothing. And, and, and here comes the <laughs> incoming lawsuit from Matt and Trey. <laughs> uh, well, we learned about discipline vans and mayonnaise whistles. Go back and listen to the live stream if you're a patron. That would be up tomorrow. Uh, LGC minus LGC. It's worth your time. Roll the credits. Maybe. There we go. <laughs> Interior crocodile alligator worthy. Eh? <laughs> I drive a Chevrolet movie theater. Oh. Yes. Oh, light speed. Five dudes. Mm. Yeah.
Bunch of beautiful party people. Back to you. Hail Saitan. Look at all these people. Look at them. So, so sexy, and they can't make a good financial decision to save their lives. They're making a brilliant. <laughs> we're, we're an excellent investment. <laughs> well, it's Holy be- better, better, better love story than Bitcoin, is all I'm saying. Right. Mike G is a times eight? Damn. Times eight. <laughs> Yeah. They're the only person even remotely in contentions, Maddie. At five. I, I, I mean, I'm sure like Mir could clean out his garage or some shit and give us a bunch of his old crap. Oh. Die at five. Bye. Five dudes.